Earlier this year, Westfield State Rep John Velas, who's also a major in the Army Reserve, returned from a second tour of duty in Afghanistan. His latest tour coincided with talk of more U.S. troop withdrawals from Afghanistan. Connecting Points' Ray Herschel recently sat down with Representative Velas to talk about the impact of any U.S. troop withdrawals and what that could mean to ongoing negotiations with the Taliban in preventing Afghanistan from once again becoming a haven for terrorists. So I was doing peace and reconciliation stuff. For the first time since we've been in Afghanistan, the U.S. government is officially engaged in direct talks with the Taliban. We are further along right now, I would argue, than we've ever been to a withdrawal from that country. We've been in that country since October of 2001. So there is, there's a lot that's changed over the course of that time, but there is serious negotiations going on as we speak. Did you see progress from the first uh, time you were in Afghanistan to the last time? Did you see any kind of progress being made over that period of few years? From a military standpoint, I would say no. It is a stalemate right now. In fact, you can make the argument right now that the Taliban controls or contests more than 50 percent of the country, more than they've controlled since September 11, 2001, where I have seen improvements and progress is in the political realm. It is widely accepted right now that there's no military solution to the war in Afghanistan. There's a political solution. It's a military stalemate, and that's where the real progress is. Well, we hear more and more talk about the U.S. troop withdrawal from yeah. Afghanistan. Yeah. Um, can you tell us what uh, the impact of those discussions or those thoughts are having on the ground in Afghanistan and with those political talks? What so that, are you that, hearing on the ground? That's there? huge. So you have 14,000 U.S. service members in Afghanistan right now, and a big part of that from the Taliban's perspective is when the U.S. service members will redeploy and come back home. So withdrawing from Afghanistan, again, 14,000. The U.S. would like to have their troops there for about three more years, a phased withdrawal. The Taliban wants it to be a year or less that's one of the main sticking points right now. Another one of the sticking points we've already kind of alluded to, and it's that the U.S. cannot allow Afghanistan ever again to be a sanctuary that the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, ISIS can use as a staging ground to attack the U.S. or their allies. So the withdrawal is a big part of it. We'd like to have some presence there in case we get some type of intelligence activity that there's some group there that's planning to attack us here. I think I thought the latest numbers I saw was that uh, uh, we expect half the troops uh, perhaps to be out by the end of April and then within three to five years pretty much the rest of the troops. Um, what, what do the troops think about that and the political leaders on the ground in Afghanistan? Are they okay with that timetable? I, I think it depends. It depends what the troops that are there are going to be there. For, for starters, with the timetable, I think that's kind of a moving tar target. So much of that is predicated on the talks that are going in Qatar right now. This very issue, the troop presence, is the most important thing. Uh, at the risk of speaking for some of the folks who are over there right now, I think there's almost a universally accepted position that there'd like to be some footprint there for the reason that I kind of just articulated about targeting, you know, continuing that tar counterterrorism mission. So I think the real debate going forward is going to be what is the mission in Afghanistan? Right now you have two missions going on at the same time. You have Operation Freedom Sentinel, which is a counterterror mission. I assume that that will continue to go on. And then you have the Train, Advise, and Assist mission, where we're training the Afghan forces to essentially take the fight to the enemy, build up their capabilities, build up a lot of their capabilities so they can do it on their own. But I think there's getting to be an accepted position from America's standpoint that at some point in time, the Afghans need to be able to do a lot of this themselves. We've been there for 18 years now, almost two decades. Yeah, You've seen the troops uh, observe what they're doing there. How would you describe uh, the morale of the U.S. troops that are in Afghanistan today? Uh, to put on the uniform of the U.S. Army, to me, is the greatest honor in my lifetime. You go to a war zone, whether it's Afghanistan, Iraq, and the service members over there, they don't make the decisions. That's politicians back here that make that decision. The service members that go over there are just like everybody else. They want to carry out the mission. Um, and in their downtime, we talk about sports. We talk about our families. We talk about stuff like that. The political discussions, for the most part, there's an understanding. That's not a decision that we have any effect on. Are you more or less optimistic about the future of Afghanistan and not becoming a haven again for terrorism after your second deployment? So there's that part of it. There is the a haven for terrorists. There are so many violent extremist organizations operating in that Afghanistan, Pakistan region. I view the Taliban to be, to believe it or not, the lesser of the threats. The real issues are Al Qaeda, 
ISIS, the Haqqani Network. I'd like the talks that are happening right now to focus a little bit more, and they are, there just hasn't been as much progress. There's the withdrawal of the U.S. forces, there is the Afghanistan never becoming a sanctuary again, but there's also the political solution to the problem. And one of the concerns is that the Taliban right now is playing a little bit of a waiting game, knowing that our Commander-in-Chief, President Trump, wants us to withdraw, so they think the time is on their side. So it's. I'd like to see more political involvement. What would a future government in Afghanistan, would the Taliban participating in it look like? Does the, uh, the political bipartis uh, partisanship rather that's going on in the U.S. today, uh, that's swirling around that, how does that impact uh, the dynamic of those discussions in Afghanistan? Does it make it more difficult to get substantive discussions? You know, I've been involved in meetings in Afghanistan where there's kind of an accepted viewpoint that there is the rhetoric that everybody sees on TV, whether it's in a tweet, whether it's in a news cycle, and then there's the actual official policy. The Afghans, I think, like much of the world, find, have, have kind of resigned themselves to the fact that, you know, maybe a tweet isn't necessarily policy, maybe a talking point from a congressman or senator isn't talking point. It's the official policy when we get orders from Washington, D.C., from the State Department, from the Pentagon about withdrawing of the troops, how we're going to move forward. So there, there's, an overall, there's an overall observation, I would say, of our U.S. politics, and they kind of take it with a grain of salt. I will say this, though, that being in a place like Afghanistan, seeing all of these people who hate each other with a passion, who are sitting down and negotiating on Monday and then on Tuesday going back to the battlefield and killing each other, for me personally, it had an effect on me. And, and when I came, when I'm coming back, now that I'm back here, it's making me kind of say to myself, we got to stop. We're better than all this. Um, before we uh, conclude this interview, I wanted to get your thoughts on another subject. Uh, you have announced that uh, uh, perhaps you'd be seeking the state Senate seat. Uh, Don Hummus and the current senator is announcing that he's running for mayor. If he's elected, you've expressed interest in the state Senate seat. Can yeah, you tell us why? Yeah, it's, it, with me, it's all about public service. And, and I was taught from a very young age that in politics, the man or woman doesn't make the times. The times make the man or woman. And if an opportunity to serve in a bigger and greater capacity presents itself, I would take a serious look at it. I've always been taught to lead by example and to kind of try to put the welfare of others in front of myself. So if I can serve in a bigger capacity, that would be something that absolutely I'd take a look at. Is this something you've been thinking about? Because it's, uh, it seemed it was very quickly after Senator Hummus had announced his plans for mayor, you indicated your interest in the Senate seat. When, when, Brian, when Brian Sullivan, the mayor of Westfield, announced that he wasn't going to run, there was immediately a lot of speculation in Westfield about what was going to happen next. Um, it probably didn't exist as much outside of Westfield, but obviously being the state rep from Westfield, I was aware of a lot more of those conversations. So it was certainly something that I'd heard, spoken to Senator Hummison about, so I, I knew it was potentially coming down the pipeline.